please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Got to say this has got to be my lucky day because I'm not only getting to interview one of my childhood heroes but I'm also getting to interview a double Formula 1 world champion Mika Hakkinen. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I understand that you're here to talk about the drink responsibly campaign. On a weekly basis I tell my audiences to drive responsibly. I see how these two are connected. Can you tell us more? It has been a great journey to get there with the Johnny Walker. And uh, uh, the message is uh, never drink and drive. I've been racing such a many years in a, such a challenging situations that way you have to stay in control. Mm. When you stay in control, you make success. So if you drink and drive, you're not in control and you make mistakes. And uh, also join the pact has been a great campaign. So we're asking people to give it their autograph, their signature, that way they never drink and drive. Now we have collected now just less than five million signatures. Uh, our intention here in India to collect two million. Oh wow. So I'm gonna be very busy. <laughs> now I have to ask you about a lot of buzz is being created regarding the 2020 regulations, the engine regulations, and I see that a lot of the big teams are very unhappy about the new regulations. What can you tell us about that? It's always a challenge to please everybody. Hmm. So far, the teams uh, in Formula One teams, they are really uh, been spending a lot of time, a lot of effort from the different engineers, designers, uh, and of course, a lot of money, uh, this development work, hmm. what they've been using so far. Uh, and and uh, if suddenly, uh, comes the different regulations, that means the people have to again spend uh, uh, a lot of money and a lot of development work right. uh, found the, found the good people uh, to found the maximum uh, to make the engines to be perform. Mm. So there's always happy and unhappy uh, 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 people uh, when they're becoming a new regulations. Mm. But where I, do you I stand? Can, I, can, I, can see, I can see that uh, you are really uh, generating uh, new possibilities, new uh, chances, mm. uh, the teams who has not been able to win, uh, engine manufacturers who has not been able to be successful. I think this is a door for the new chances. All right. And also <laughs> about the new changes that we're going to see next year, you're going to see the halo fitment being added. What do you think of that? I am not so uh, excited about it. But I'm sure if FIA, if they decide to introduce something like this, they will do everything. They will test everything. That way it will be safe. Mm. And it would bring more safety to Formula One. Only thing, this can sound a bit crazy, but only thing I'm wondering that if the Formula One car in an accident goes upside down, mm. then, then you have a system like a halo with, with doesn't necessarily Stuff to get out. You cannot get out. Hopefully, yeah. So there is that kind of things which are always challenging. But like I said, FIA doing maximum hmm. to find the best possible uh, solutions. So the last time you were with us, you told us that the driver is the heart of the car. And if you have a good driver, you have a, a winning team. Now, if that is true still, uh, we have so many good and talented racing drivers on the grid today. We have, uh, if I may call him Mad Max, we have Daniel Ricciardo, we have Esteban Ocon, and we, uh, you know, Valtteri Bottas, and we have even Sebastian Vettel still. Who has impressed you the most? There is a certainly great talent drivers out there. Lewis Hamilton, what he has done this year, done a great job. Yeah. Uh, he's been consistent most of the time, mm. more consistent than others. Mm. And, and, and he's been able to do a great, great job. Max Verstappen has done an incredible job. You know, uh, difficult to say actually. It's difficult to say who would be the number one there. Where do you see Formula E in the realm of motorsport today? Because we see manufacturers see it as a test bed for developing future electric powertrains. I think Formula E is a fantastic racing category, and I, I'm very confident that uh, over the next three, four years, uh, we will see some incredible changes there, simply because of development. You know, I, I think the fans, what they want to they see, they want to see 
really fast car and mm. uh, uh, and the sound <laughs> and the sound which is missing sure. in formula e though ah uh, yeah exactly so so soon as they develop the batteries in a level that way they can go full power for uh, two three hours then i would say wow i think that could be a mega achievement right but the sound the sound very important yeah i think it needs a bit the sound yeah I can't let you go without asking you a couple of quick questions. I don't want you to think too much. I just want you to answer whatever comes to your mind. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, at the start. So no, you I cannot think, I, think at I think all. I think I'm I'm ready yeah. All right. So who was your best teammate in Formula 1? You're thinking. Tony Herbert. <laughs> who is the quicker Finn, Valtteri Bottas or Kimi Raikkonen? Valtteri Bottas. Who is your current favorite F1 driver? Oh, I have to answer quickly. Oh my God! <laughs> I don't have the time. Uh, I don't know actually. I don't know. Okay, Michael Schumacher or Ayrton Senna, who was the better champion? <laughs> This is a tricky question. Oh my, we are put me in a difficult position. Equal, they are equal. All right, McLaren, Mercedes, or McLaren Honda. McLaren Mercedes. <laughs> All right, and who do you think will be the next uh, world champion between Max Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Valtteri Bottas? I say Valtteri Bottas. Thank you so much, Mika. This is great. That's so tricky, Tosh. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.